going to discuss list comprehensions. So the idea is basically the take the normal for loop that you've been working with here and then transform that into a much more concise representation as a single line in square brackets where we have uh, the keywords for and in. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I have a list here of numbers and I want to square each element in that list. So the way that I would normally do that with a for loop is to create a new list and then iterate over all the elements in the list of numbers. And I'm going to give each one of those values the variable n. And then for each element in the list, I'm going to double, or I'm going to square the number and then append that result into my list. So when I do that, I get back the expected result of 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25 from the original list. So the way that we would transform that into a list comprehension is <coughs> we do use the, the square brackets. We want to get an output of a list. And we're using the same keywords for and in, except here the thing that we're doing, the n squared, goes on the left-hand side of that statement. And so it's just going to do this for each element in numbers. So it's pretty straightforward to read once you get used to list comprehensions. So the result there is the same. Now a slightly more complicated version of that is the conditional list comprehension. There we're doing the same expression for item in list, but we've added the additional keyword if. That's equivalent to maybe something that you've seen before of having a for loop and then an if statement and then an expression. It's the same operation. So a quick example of that, I have this string here, and if you remember, each character is essentially uh, an element in a list uh, in that string. What we're going to operate here is we're going to take each element uh, when or for the, that element being in string if that value is a digit. So let's see what would happen here. So I'm going to have a h as the first element that we're going to be parsed. So here the string is that uh, list of characters essentially. And the first value is an h. So the value of x here has the, the value h. And then, so now we apply the conditional if h is a digit, which turns out to be false, then we would put it in our list. That's here. Then we would do the next element, so e. So we only have a value there for uh, the element e being equal to the x if the value e is a digit. So we iterate over each one of these elements, and in the end, what we're going to get back is a list of the numeric values from this string. So we're just iterating over each value in the string. That's the character, and then we're applying this test, and this is the thing that we do at the end. All right, so let's take another example here. I'm going to have, rather than a list, just a range, so it's a, a generator, and we're going to generate the, element, the, the values 0 through 9, and that's the, we're going to double each element, but only if the condition is met that the value divided by 2 has a remainder of 0. So it's a module operation. So we're going to take the values from 0 to 9, and we're going to double them when they are even. So here we, got, we originally had the values of 0, which got doubled because it was even, but it's still 0. Then the next element that passed this test was 2, and then we doubled 2. And the last little thing I'll leave you with here, uh, this is to me a little bit more complicated than I'd like. And so I'll run it to show you what it does. Uh, it's a two nested for loops in a list comprehension. And this gets a little bit unreadable. So you can sort of see we're going to do this operation when x is of values 1, 2, and 1, 3, and 5. 
and then there's a nested for loop. So we have two values here, x and y. So the, the way that we're going to think about this is the outer loop is this first statement. So the first, the outer loop is going to take value 1, and then we go to execute the inner loop, and that first element in the inner loop is a 2. So now we've got the values of 1 for x and 2 for y, and we're going to add those two values, which is the first result, 3. And then since we're still in the outer loop of value 1, the next iteration of this is going to be a value of 4 for y. So we add 1 plus 4 and get 5. And here I've typed out all the iterations of the loop for x and y, and that's where that list is coming from. So this is a nested loop inside of a list comprehension.